Who knew eating curry could give someone such a glow up? I mean, seriously, Fran had like three different adult forms in this episode based on the type of curry she ate. And I love the fact that she got her curry. She got such a abundance of amazing treats that she can eat at any time because of that little pocket dimension keeping it nice and toasty. But I was so happy to see what happened to that fat knight. He immediately, after last week's cliffhanger, made me just say, that is a creep and then some. But to learn that essentially his entire life was just basically doing whatever he wanted with no repercussions, and then to see how absolutely obliterated he got after Fran and Teacher just basically remove his manners, it was beautiful to witness, I have to say. Now, I mean, most people are probably going to be pretty happy with what happened to this dude, because it's not like he was a nice guy. Yes, there was an unexpected extra oomph to the kind of like, holy shit, you know, we wanted to test our new skills, see what would happen. But yes, he his life got absolutely ruined. But given the number of lives that he's ruined himself by just people believing, I can tell who's lying. And as we saw, like, he was bullshitting even towards Fran about like, no, like, we're not lying. We did destroy the crystal. And just the fact that he turned into such an even grosser version of himself. I love the fact that he has like roses and like perfume that he would spray because just looking at the dude, you just, you can smell Comic-Con from him and then some. And I love the fact that he then just melted into an even worse version of himself and how Fran almost bullshitted him so hard that she just completely forgot and he was just like, well, wait a second, maybe, no, 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 that's the sword for sure. And I honestly thought the dude he hired at the end was a dog and that's why she was so scared. Apparently it's called a blue cat, which is the race and I guess the black cats don't get along with them. But I mean, it looked more like a dog to me, but I'm gonna be interested to see because this face here is the first time we've ever seen Fran to that type of rage and that type of I need to kill sort of a feeling and I mean even though she jokes about killing this dude in this episode like it's a lot different than the end of the episode where it feels like a more worthwhile threat sort of a thing. I think what I like about reincarnated as a sword is there's actually like punishments and just desserts for people who deserve it. I mean in this episode our sword teacher here even admits like had he took or had Fran took his advice you know the village probably wouldn't be here as it stands and Fran's determination to give her life to protect the villagers is the reason why the villagers can be happy right now. And I also like the fact that a character who's been just completely bought his way into power and even the guild master completely hates him. The fact that Fran ruined his life is just so perfect. Like, I mean, they could have went a bit darker with it. He could have ended up killing himself. But even then, I mean, it's not like they did anything that he didn't deserve. I mean, yes, their little experiment ended up ruining his life. But this is a dude who's literally been ruining people's lives probably since the day he could. You know, he bought himself into power. And in doing so, a lot of innocent people were probably punished because of it. So, you know, their lack of remorse for what happened to him, I I'm completely there. I mean, there's some people who don't deserve forgiveness. There's some people who deserve fates worse than death. He wasn't a fate worse than death guy, but he deserved to be punished and stripped away into a homeless bum. And I am absolutely glad they went with that because I thought he was going to be a lot longer of a character on screen who would be in a position of power, cause them a lot of issues. And the fact that they can so quickly just destroy this man's life... I love it. You don't see it a lot, not even just in fantasy or isekai shows, just in anime in general. These type of characters last far too long in a situation of power, and yes, you could argue he did last a long time in power with a very shitty personality, but as soon as Fran came on screen, it was game over for the boy. But I think what I like about this show is that there's a general sense of progression, right? Not only just with the climbing of rank, she can't just jump to rank A because she did something extraordinary, other guilds would want to, you know, keep it relatively normal. So she doesn't jump up as much as she probably deserves, but given how recently she became an adventurer, it makes sense. The fact that she kind of has like this hip hip hooray moment where she buys everyone drinks and just, it feels like there's a natural bond being built with this guild and the threats that pop up, they get dealt with in a realistic way for the environment that they're in. But I think the thing that continues to make it feel so great is that the general mechanics in this world are the extra layer, that extra depth you don't see too often. There's been some good shows this year that have done just this, but you don't see them as much as I think we should. And the idea of like that pocket dimension, you know, you could easily say, oh, they make her curry and you know, the reason she doesn't get whenever she wants is it's a pretty long meal to make. It's much easier to just barbecue up something that you killed on the woods. But the fact that he can make an abundance of meals and store it in the pocket dimension 
and whenever she wants a hot tasty meal, she can do it. And I think it's so cool to see how they did that. For a slice of life moment where it was just really cute seeing the different ways they were cooking and beating the meat all up and then turning it into nice little dishes, it was just great to see how they continue to actually flesh out her system mechanics that she has alongside just having kind of wholesome father-daughter duo as we just have some great scenes backing it. Like Reincarnated as a Sword is, in my opinion, one of this year's Isekai best. It's, I'm not saying the best, but it's up there if you were to make like a top 10 or something like that. And I really think what makes it work is that Fran feels like a character who actually progresses without jumping in a way that makes her feel indestructible. Like the previous battle that she won, it wasn't like she stuck around because she believed she could win. It was more of she stuck around because she knew she had to win, otherwise everyone that she's come to appreciate would end up dead. And I mean, just to see how happy everyone was, you know, with her, like, holy shit, you were doing all these crazy things. If you ever need me in your party, you know, just ass, I'll be right there. It feels like you actually progress with these characters. And I love the fact that you even continue to have like those dad moments with the sword where like you have all these middle aged men, as he says, like basically saying, hey, if you need any help, just ask me. I'm right there. And he's like, what are all these middle aged men doing here? And I mean, based on the glow up we saw in this episode, I mean, if we ever got to see her in like an adult form at some point in the story, he's going to be even more of an overprotective dad. I completely imagine. But this has been a great watch, like we're seven episodes into this show and it really feels like a world that I don't want to see gone after one season and I really hope it does well enough to warrant at least a season two because this is a show that has a great world, something that we're used to, but it's the way they take things that we're used to and just refine it into something new. Like we've seen discrimination in these types of shows before, especially any world with demi-humans, not so human characters, completely beast people. But I think Fran's people in the Black Cats are actually some of the best handled in terms of why they're discriminated against, why people initially push back, but how she starts to feel like she starts fitting in, especially with this guild that I've seen in the past couple of years for these types of anime. And I think it's just, it's the abundance of all these different elements that on paper I've seen hundreds of times, but it actually feels like reincarnated as a sword, which makes it stand above. A lot of shows with a similar idea at the start, but unlike those shows, actually developed into something worthwhile. And I mean, you also just back in with the amazing voice acting and production quality. Like seriously, if anyone says that this isn't one of the best animated and visually presented isekai of the season, or even of the year I should say, they're fooling themselves. Like we've had so much action and it feels more consistent than a lot of shows that, you know, are supposed to be these high Sakuga productions. And then we have this cute cat girl making dinner that's out animating so many shows out there. I'm excited to see what's gonna happen with next week's episode. Obviously we end in a pretty fine cliffhanger, if not brutal. And honestly, I'm just here for the absolute just destroyed life that this fat asshole got and I'm just, here for it but thoughts and feelings down below leave a like if you enjoyed subscribe if you're new around here you can also consider supporting the patreon we got exclusive live reaction series going on there and you can also get video shout outs like a few individuals are getting today so i appreciate the support from justin shang t sylph and kelly martinez reyes so i appreciate the support everyone please take care have a good one